So in this video, I'm going to move from measures of fertility or births to measures of mortality. So looking at the second component of change within our uh, demographic um, equation, you know, how we can capture the number of deaths that occur within society in different population groups and within different um, places. So we'll be looking at a number of, of different demographic um, measures that are used to capture mortality. So as a bit of background, um, we see really strong inequalities in mortality across um, social classes, but also across um, space. This is a map produced by um, some demographers at University College London, uh, who calculated life expectancies <coughs> around different tube stations within <coughs> London. And we can see really strong inequalities in mortality in these different areas. So, for example, moving from um, Oldgate East, <coughs> where we have a life expectancy of 86, we can see around a <coughs> nine year drop in life expectancy as we move along this particular line of the tube to mile end with a life expectancy of 78. One of the key um, areas of interest in the study of mortality of late has been a um, levelling off in the trend in mortality or life expectancy in many countries, including the UK and Scotland. So we've seen an improvement in mortality, declining rates of mortality, increasing life expectancies over the past 100 years. But that increase has come to a halt in um, particular places since around 2011, both in Scotland and in the UK, but also elsewhere in countries such as the, the US. And clearly this levelling off in the improvement we see in mortality has implications for population projections and assumptions we make about the the future. So I'm going to introduce um, how we measure mortality using a set of different measures which are listed here, starting off with crude death rates, age-specific rates, um, and finishing with um, standardised mortality rates. I'm not going to cover measures such as life expectancy and life tables, but those materials are provided as part of the materials um, offered through this project. So crude death rate is very similar to the crude birth rate. Here we're looking at the total death in a year divided by uh, the mid-year population. We express this as usually as a rate per thousand. Often this is presented for men and women separately. It's the simplest measure for us to calculate. But just as for the crude uh, birth rate, this is uh, the crude death rate is also unsound as a basis for comparing mortality of different populations. And for the same reasons, we have no control for differences in age structure in different population groups or places. So an alternative is to calculate age specific death rates. Um, here we're looking at the deaths to, the, to a person at a particular age divided by the mid-year population at that age. Again, usually multiplied by a thousand. The challenge here is that we require more data, which we might not have in some contexts. We usually calculate separate rates for males and, and females. Um, and this really allows us to capture the strong age and sex pattern in mortality that we see here in this graph of age specific death rates for England and Wales in 2009. So a few points to note about this graph. First of all, we see higher levels of mortality for men compared to women. And this is uh, despite women reporting poorer, poorer health. Um, so women tend to live longer lives, but in poorer health um, compared to, to men. But we also see uh, a steady uh, increase in um, mortality rates with age, with the exception of the first year of life. So the first year of life, particularly risky um, in terms of uh, risk of mortality, and we see a decline in, in rates from that first year of life to the age group of one to four. And the extent of that reduction in mortality between the first year of life and the subsequent ages is particularly marked in 
developing countries which have poorer um, uh, infrastructure, health services, um, poor sanitation and, and so on. If we're interested in comparing mortality between populations, we have to age standardise because of the strong relationship between um, mortality rates and age. Simply comparing crude death rates can be very misleading. So we can see here in this example that in 1999, the crude death rate in the UK and in Togo was very similar, around 10 per thousand. And we might conclude from this that we see similar mortality conditions in Togo and the UK. But that would be a mistake because if we looked at Togo's age specific death rates, we would actually see they were much higher than the UK's. The issue here is that Togo has a greater proportion of its population at the younger ages where the mortality risk is lowest. So these crude death rates are actually masking the differences in um, the age for age risk of mortality. We can see here the differences in population structures in these two population pyramids. And we can see in the UK we have a far greater proportion of the population at these older ages where the mortality risk is highest. So it would be unwise to compare crude death rates in these two contexts. Here are the age specific mortality rates in England and Wales and Togo. And we can see that indeed the rates are much higher in Togo. And we can also see this uh, particularly high level of mortality uh, in the first year of life in Togo compared to um, England and Wales, which is a feature of countries with less, uh, less, less wealthy countries with less developed health, uh, maternity services and sanitation. So if we're interested in comparing mortality between populations, there's a, a need to develop age standardised measures. Um, we can compare age specific rates for each population and we can also use age standardisation to develop a single measure that summarises the mortality overall while controlling for differences in age. So I guess a bit like the total fertility rate. And there are two different ways that we can um, produce an age standardised measure. Uh, these are direct standardization, which I'm not going to focus on here uh, to any large degree, and indirect standardization, which I'm focusing on because it's more widely used and it has fewer data demands than the direct standardization method. But a wider point to make here is that these methods of standardization are very widely applied uh, and they can be compared, they can be used to compare rates for other outcomes, not just mortality, where our outcome is strongly influenced by age. So this applies to standardized illness rates, standardized unemployment rates, and indeed standardized rates of uh, migration. So these are the two methods of standardization in brief. If we're going to apply the direct standard, the direct um, approach, um, we might be interested in comparing mortality in three different populations, A, B and C. What we would do is we would take the age specific death rates for each of those populations and then we would apply those age specific death rates to some standard population to develop a, a, a set of expected deaths. And we can then compare the expected deaths across the three different populations and we can be confident that age structure isn't driving any differences because we've used the same population. So essentially those expected deaths are the deaths that will be expected if the age specific death rates of each of these three populations were applied to a standard population structure. The indirect standardization approach takes a different approach. So here we take the age specific death rates of our standard population. And we take those death rates and apply those to the populations of the three areas that we're interested in. So again, here we get an expected total of deaths, but this is the expected total of deaths in each of our areas of interest if they experience the age specific death rates of the standard population. And we can compare those expected deaths to the deaths that actually occurred in those populations. So to make this slightly more, more clear, if we were interested in, in comparing mortality in England, Wales and Scotland, in our direct method, we would take the age specific death rates for each of these countries and apply them to our standard population, which could be Great Britain, to get expected deaths that we can compare. In the indirect approach, we take the age specific death rates of our standard population, in this case, Great Britain, and we apply those age specific death rates to England, Wales, and Scotland separately to get expected deaths 
in each of those countries which we can compare to what actually um, occurred. So I'm going to, that, that's the general idea of, of age standardization. I think it will be clearer to go through a worked example of how to do it to show how this works in practice. And the example I'm going to look at is concerning whether comparing mortality in two groups, amongst married males and amongst single males. And I'm interested in finding out whether risks of mortality are higher or lower for married individuals compared to those who are single. And we can think of different hypotheses here. So we might think, well, marriage is good for health and living a long life in that if you get married, you have support from a partner. You may have a family which could discourage risky behaviour. Or the causality could run in the other direction. It could be that people uh, who are healthy, predisposed to a long life, are more likely to get married. We might argue that marriage could be bad for health if the marriage is a, a stressful one or um, marriage brings less less freedom. Um, or some researchers have connected marriage to things like obesity, which could be bad for, for health and uh, mortality uh, uh, too. If we look at the data which we can access, so mortality statistics record whether people were married or single, and this table shows uh, mortality uh, population figures and deaths um, by age for the total male population, for males who are single and for males who are married, and we can calculate crude death rates using this data. So the crude death rate for all males is 11.5 per thousand. The crude death rates for males who were single was 3.9 per thousand. And the crude death rate for males who are married was 11.7 per thousand. So just looking at this data, we might conclude that um, being single is the, the best for health because those who are single have the lowest rates of mortality. But the problem here is that crude death rates don't take into account differences in age structure. We might conclude from the crude death rates that married males are three times more likely to die compared to single males based on those crude rates. But we know that these two groups have different age structures. Single males are much more likely to have a younger population. And these differences in age structure make it very unwise to compare crude death rates directly. We need to produce a standardised measure. So one option is to calculate um, a, a indirectly standardised um, rate of mortality. We can see the different age structure among single and married males here. So we can see that... Um, for single males, um, over 50% of single males are under the age of 40, compared to only 17% of uh, married males. So if we're going to produce an indirectly standardised mortality rate, what we're doing is we're using the age-specific death rates of a standard population and applying them to the age structures of the populations that we're comparing to generate an expected number of deaths. So. In this example of married males and uh, single males, we might take the age specific death rates for all males as our standard and apply those rates to the populations of single and married males. So the value of this is these calculations are the basis for calculating the standardized mortality ratio. So this is one of the most widely used um, measures of mortality. It's one that's reported in the pop group software and which can be entered into the pop group software uh, as an input for the projections that the software produces. So um, these are the steps that we go through um, through the uh, when using indirect standardization. So focusing on single males first of all to calculate um, a standardized mortality ratio using indirect standardization, we'd first of all take our age specific death rates from the standard population, in this case all males, and we'd apply that to the population, apply those rates to the population of single males to compute an expected number of deaths for single males. So this is the deaths that would occur if single males experienced the age specific death rates of all males. And then we would take our expected deaths and we would combine those with the observed deaths. We would divide the observed deaths for single males by the expected deaths to give us our standardized mortality ratio. So let's go through the, the calculations. Here's the, the data. So first of all, I need to calculate my um, age-specific death rates for my standard population. So that's all males 
And I can do that using the data here. So zooming in on that data, I can calculate my age specific death rates as simply the deaths at each age divided by the population at each um, age. So I can then take these age specific death rates and I can now apply these to the two populations that I'm interested in, married and single males. So focusing on single males, first of all, here's my population of single males by age. Here's my age specific death rates for my standard population of all males. And by multiplying these two columns, I can get my expected deaths for single males if they experience the age specific death rates for all males. And I can calculate in total 23,125 expected deaths. But I also have observed deaths, 28,852 occurred in the single male population. So the last stage of this um, approach is to calculate our standardized mortality ratio, which is observed deaths divided by the expected deaths. And in this case, I get a value of 1.25. So how do we interpret that? We can think about the standardized mortality ratio for single males as a ratio of actual deaths among single males to the number that we'd expect if those single males experienced the age specific death rate of our standard population. So if we have a situation where actual deaths equals expected deaths, then our standardized mort mortality ratio equals one. A standardized mortality ratio above one indicates higher mortality than in the standard population, while below one indicates a reverse. So on the standardized mortality ratio 1.25 in this example tells us that single males have higher mortality than the standard, all males, by 1.25. So this is a really valuable comparative measure of mortality. And one of the key advantages is that we only need one set of age specific death rates for the standard. We don't require knowledge of the age specific death rates for the population of interest which is useful when that data isn't available. We only need to know the total observed deaths for the population of, of interest and the age structure of our population of interest. Sometimes SMRs will be presented um, um, with an index of 100. So they'll simply be multiplied by 100. Um, the interpretation is uh, exactly the, the same, purely a presentational um, issue. So we can see that actually the, the crude death rate results were misleading. Single males have higher levels of mortality, and we can see that in the age specific death rates, which are higher for single compared to married males. Standardized mortality ratios, as I said before, are very useful comparative measures. So here's some data from 2004, a little bit dated now, but this shows standardized mortality ratios across areas. So this ranges from uh, an SMR of 64 in Kensington and Chelsea to 131 in Hartlepool. So if we're producing projections for areas across the UK, it's clearly very important to um, capture this variability in mortality across places that we see here and that I showed in the earlier graph of life expectancies around different areas of London uh, and London tube stops. A final measure that we can calculate from our standardized mortality ratio is what is known as an indirectly standardized death rate. So here we simply multiply our standardized mortality ratio by the crude death rate for the standard population. So in our particular example for single males, we had an SMR of 1.25. The crude death rate for the standard was 11.5. So that gives us an indirectly standardized death rate of 14.4 per thousand. For the married males, and I haven't gone through the calculations for these, but the standardized mortality ratio was 0.78, indicating lower mortality for married males compared to the standard. If we multiply that by the crude death rate for the standard, we get an indirectly standardized death rate of 9 per thousand. So we can actually compare these indirectly standardized death rates for these two groups and be confident that age structure isn't driving any differences in the levels observed. So that gives all the material that you need for the workshop, which is concerned with comparing mortality in 2015 in Fife and one other council area of your choice using this approach of indirect standardization. So there's a, a set of uh, instructions for the worksheet. Um, you have an Excel worksheet in which to conduct your analysis. 
um, and also a completed worksheet is available with the answers for this exercise.